Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Passionate Pouring. I'm Kristen, and I'm coming to you from Ontario, Canada. And it has been a real pleasure doing my art and being able to share it with you. This, this is just wonderful. Um, gives me something to do while I am self-isolating and um, got to do something to keep yourself from going nuts. Um, so and social distancing from the fridge, well, um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find that one out yet. Um, gained a couple of pounds, so art really isn't going to help me take it off, but uh, I'm really looking forward to when I can go outside and do more outside. So until that time comes, um, I'm going to create my art and share it with you. I'm running out of canvases, but I was lucky enough to um, go to the ReStore and find some tiles. So I'm going to do another tile pour for you today. And I did do a reverse dip a while ago, and I didn't start my recording until after I had already my, put my paint down on my tile. So I'm going to do one from start to finish with you today. And as you can see, I've got my napkin and my 12 by 12 inch ceramic tile. I've just wiped it off and I've let it air dry so that there's no water on it. So any water left on your tile will compromise the consistency of your paints. And you want them all to be the same. So what I have um, today for paints for you, I'm gonna layer my, um, my tile with white and um, instead of doing a bottom bottle reverse dip I'm gonna do a puddle pour so I have a cobalt blue here I have an orange and you probably hear my cat in the background. There's birds on the balcony and he's really excited about that. I have my yellow. And I have an iridescent white. I've added pearl iridescence to this. So that's going to change what the white is going to look like in my fingers crossed flower. Also, I have a skewer that I'm going to use to help create the petals on my flower. So let's do this. I'm kind of excited. We don't have any flowers blooming here yet. There are a few buds on the trees out there. You can kind of see uh, a light green tinge coming onto the trees now. So everything, oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm glad I stirred that. I got a lump and I don't want a lump. So we'll get rid of that real quick. Let's check and make sure I don't have any more. If I do, they'll come out, but I... So always good to have tweezers on hand if you find anything in your paint. When you lay it down on your canvas or your tile or whatever you're pouring on. I've actually seen in a face group group that I belong with, um, a lady had done um, a pour on her lawnmower. 
literally the handles all the way down the the mower deck and the tires and it looks so cool so she's literally got one of a kind lawnmower she's also done a bike and that looked really cool too so we're just waiting to see what she's going to do next so here we go it's gonna pour my base down And I made sure that my butane torch is full. Sure, as you can see, I'm just moving my base around. You really don't need a lot of paint for your base to do this. I just want to make sure that I get everything covered up on my base or on my, my tile. Another little lump. Must be my white. The paint. Okay, and over to this side, in this corner. Okay, we're just going to add a little bit. I'm just helping it along a little bit there with my finger. Now you probably can't see, but I've got some air bubbles on my tile, so I need to remove those. Okay. And I'm going to need another napkin because I just dribbled paint on this one. So, I'll use it. Clean myself up a little bit. The damp rags are always good too. It's an old one that I've had kicking around. And I'm just going to add a little bit more here. I can see a dent. And go flow over the edge. Okay, so I'm going to grab my torch and 
get rid of some air bubbles. And I have another mystery object right there. better. Alrighty. And it looks like we're going to get some rain. So sorry, I just had to turn my overhead light on. Um, sky's getting kind of dark out there. Okay, so I just want to check and make sure you guys are right in the center there. Yeah, looking good. So, get another napkin. We're good. Okay. Put that over there so it's out of the way. So what I'm gonna do to start off with, I'm gonna pour. It's a little bit too thick. Hang on here. It's a wee bit too thick. So just want to add a little bit of water to thin it down a bit. Because I use um, Elmer's glue wall and water as my pouring medium, if you let your paint sit, sometimes it'll thicken up a bit. And you need a certain consistency to do um, a dip. Okay. And I still want to add a little bit more water to that. But I don't want it too thin that it's going to um, just muddy up when I put the other colors with it. Okay, we're good. All right. So, I'm just going to pour right in the center a puddle. And I got bubbles. It's okay. I'll and then I'm gonna add the orange to that on top. And my yellow. Okay.
I did fill this up. It's okay. Use my heat wand. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my um, my wooden skewer and I'm going to create petals. So I'm going to go from the outside. Oh my goodness gracious. So I'm going to go from the outside here. Into the middle. And as you can see, I'm creating the look of petals. So I have, you've got, I have the definite outline of petals here. I'm going to now go from inside here and I'm going to bring it out. Bring this one in a little bit more. Kind of like a little bit longer. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. And then my white. Oh my goodness.
And you can see why I wanted to put this in the squeezy bottle. I get more control with my paint doing it this way versus trying to do this out of a cup. Okay, and that's that. I just have a couple of air bubbles I'm getting rid of. take my my paper napkin and I'm going to completely unfold it bring it up to the edge of my tile very slowly lay it down over top of my paint. You want to do it slowly so that the, the napkin will lay down across your paint nicely. And to help eliminate pockets of air that get stuck underneath. There is air in there, yes. What I'm going to do now is very gently pat the napkin over the paint so that the paint will stick to my, my napkin I'm not using the uh, the cheap dollar store ones for this because the dollar store ones that I got um, are only one ply and guaranteed when you put a, a one ply napkin on this, it will rip. I know I did it. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna take one corner here. And another corner, oh, please work, please work. Take my other corner and I'm going to meet them in the middle. And do the same with the other napkin. And you want to keep tension on the ones you've already lifted up. And There we go, fingers crossed. There we go. Wow.
Okay. Now doing the, the dip that I did, um, as you can see, I've got bare edges around my tile. from the napkin. So I'm just going to add some more paint to my tile. And this will all flatten out. And there's still paint in the center there. I can stretch my flower out. Make it a little bit bigger. You can see in the center that the colors have blended. I only use the three colors, the, the blue, the yellow, and the orange. But I've got green in there. I've got different shades of orange, different shades of blue, as you can see. Only using three colors. Well, yeah, there's the white in there, but uh, that was to try and bring out um, some contrast. Okay. <laughs> I blew my glove. My fingernails poking out. Okay. Well, what do you think, guys? Do you like that? I wish you could talk to me. I could hear what you have to say. Let's give it a go over again with my um, heat gun. And uh, I didn't add any silicone. There you go.
I've got a persistent bubble there. And I've got it. Oh my gosh. Cat hairs. Okay, well, let's just touch up that little spot that I uh, had to. And as I said, this will all flatten out. The paint will continue to move. So, I'm going to take my fingers, catch the drippings. And just touch up. Tires are porous and they tend to uh, <clears throat> soak up the paint as well. I'm going to make sure you get your sides well done. Because those edges are pretty raw. I'm going to take a peek around the back, see if I have any raw edges there. And I do in the corners. There's that one. I'm just going to get rid of my uh, wet stuff here. Okay.
Move my paint out of the way. An empty cup there. So I mix my white in. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this one out of the way. Right there. And check and see that you are still in the camera and I haven't got the tile too far back. No, nope, that looks pretty good. Awesome. So we're going to do another pour. We're going to use the same, <clears throat> excuse me, the exact same colors as I did with that dip. And this is the bottom of a pop bottle that I have cut off. So this is a bottle bottom reverse dip. I'm trying and say that fast five times. So. Once again, I'm going to add my base. Give that a tilt around. This is a six by eight hexagon tile. So I kind of want to make a matching piece to go with the last dip that we did. up. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. Oh, one little spot right here. Okay. Alright, so, <clears throat> pardon me. And take your pot bottom and put it in the center. Okay. Yes, I know I've got a white base. But I'm going to start off with white. Okay. 
my blue. This one takes a little bit longer because um, you want everything to be um, the same size as it runs off. <clears throat> excuse me, as it runs off the um, side of the bottle. white again you kind of watch as it's running down the side of the bottom I rest my case trying to say it's five times fast <laughs> one is enough Okay, now I'm going to add my orange. Okay, white again. I got something in the I got a glug in there. Come on. I'm sorry guys, I've got to get rid of this so I can uh continue my pour. Well I'm gonna leave that one to one side and I've got another lid over here. Now I'm going to add my yellow.
take it off. <clears throat> My blue thickened up on me again. Even just sitting there for that little bit of time. Okay. Some orange again. I believe this will be my last layer. <clears throat> well, they pretty well look all uniform. That's a good thing. I'm just going to let the rest of that paint run down the side of the pop bottle bottom. I just have a few bubbles in here that I'm popping because I don't want to bring out my um, heat wand in case I hit the uh, my pop bottle bottom. And that will just destroy the look that I'm going for. Okay. There we go. Okay, so very carefully remove the 
and there's so much paint on there you can see it's starting to go in to the middle part which is what I want to do I also want to help it along a little bit so take my skewer and into the center And give it a little bit of swirl in the middle there. Okay. Once again, we're going to do the napkin over top. Very gently, pat. Just want to get rid of the air bubbles and help the paint stick a little bit to the napkin. Not so sure whether I like this one or not. It's not exactly the effect I was looking for, but
One thing I will say when um, I do put a video up, not everything is a success. And um, I don't want people to think that everything I do is great, but it's not. How can you learn if you don't make mistakes, right? Okay. Let's get the heat warmed out. And see that helps. If you can see see it or not but the um the pearlescent white has kind of given the the paint a shimmery shiny look what i do like about this one is the edges of the blue they look like clouds I'm just going to play with this for a second here. And Excuse me. Excuse me. I am so tempted to take a little tiny balloon and pop it in the center there and see what happens. Should I? Should I, should I, should I, should I, should I? Yeah. If I don't like it, I can always scrape it off. Okay, here we go. Just curious here, see what I can do. Really not doing anything. Okay. Well, you don't know unless you try it, right?
Well, there you go. My other one, it it doesn't look too nice. It's uh, shifting and it is going to be a do-over. This one's actually prettier by quite a bit. See, it's gone muddy. That's what I mean by muddy. Doesn't look very nice at all. So I'm gonna scrape that one off, wash the tile, redo it again, but I won't keep you while I do that. So until the next time, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to creating another piece of work for you and uh, enjoy what you have left for your weekend. Saturday here. So thank you once again for joining me. And until the next time. See, I blew out my glove. <laughs> until the next time. Stay safe. Be happy. This will pass. Until the next time. Bye for now.